There is a new trend on YouTube's political communities. We see these individuals in this so-called leftist community called BreadTube. And you can call these individuals many names. You can call them class reductionists, um, brochurists, dirtbag left. The individual or the indiv individuals I'll be talking about are these people that don't really have that much difference with the so-called identity politics left or what we call bread tube. Their difference is only in rhetoric and rhetoric is the only thing that differentiates them from the rest. And the problem with them is that they embrace these behaviors, these languages, or whatever thing you, you think about when you, you think of edginess on the internet. You don't really see that much point in what they're doing. What they're doing is saying all these things, causing controversy without really having a purpose for it. Their justification is just saying that they can do it. I myself share concepts with them. I seek to reject traditional leftism and all those things. But I feel like certain individuals break this promise. They ruin it and make it dirty. One member of this community I highly dislike is a YouTuber named Pig Puncher. One of my associates made a video on Pig Puncher. His name is Lord Huguenot. I recommend that you go and see his video. And I also recommend that you see the other channels that I'm gonna show right now. They are fascinating and I recommend that you subscribe to them. These channels are critical of BreadTube, the critical of mainstream leftist rhetoric and opinions on YouTube. And I think it's helpful for my viewers or subscribers to find these people and let the subscribers of the other channels also know of my channel's existence. Pig Puncher reacted to one of my associates videos. That is the video of Lord Huguenot criticizing Pig Puncher. Apparently, Lord Huguenot's comment section got the attention of Pig Puncher, so he read the comments below. And apparently one of the comments was my own. So I think it's important for us to first start off with reacting to this clip, and we must deconstruct it. Oh boy. I mean, like, if you look at the comments of this video, I can read them. They're just like... This cringe kind of gives me life. Ah oh, yes, Pig Puncher, we need, we need to be edgy, but don't say the N-word. That hurts my feelings. What? Perhaps BreadTube was a mistake. Believe it or not, BreadTube was originally like this. ContraPoints and HBomber guy are incel skeptics, and they are very reactionary and bougie. These people literally hate BreadTube. These people don't want the left to spread. The first thing I have to say is that the comment that talks about the N-word isn't my own. It belongs to a different person. Honestly, Pig Puncher does not actually make sense. He looks at the comment and he says that we are, we are the type of people that want to prevent the growth of BreadTube. And 
that's a that's a poor argument to make against us. And we don't like bread too, but of course we don't. We don't want to grow. That's true. But we want leftism to grow. We want people to realize the complexity of hierarchies and what we call oppression. That is an important thing to us. As for ContraPoints and H. Bummer Guy, they were members of the skeptic community at some point. And the thing that made them diverge from that community at the time was because they didn't fell into what we call reactionary thought. And I'll show you proof that it's actually a thing, at least for ContraPoints. It, it did actually happen. I would recommend that you watch the first two videos of our channel and you will see many examples of how drastic her opinions change and you see that she was once one of those Christopher Hitchin fanboys. Since then, many of the community's central figures have stopped making videos or have moved on to other subjects. So what happened? How come new atheism has faded away? Now I want you to keep in mind that I'm an aging, pseudo-intellectual twink with an alcohol problem, and I'm not claiming to be smarter than Thunderfoot, but sometimes the simplest answer is the best. New atheism was a trend, and like all trends, it died out. As a topic of discussion, atheism is inherently limited. There are only so many different ways you can say that God does not exist. I think when it comes down to it, people just got bored. Meanwhile, new social movements have arrived, drawing attention to a different set of problems. Some YouTubers have adapted to the new moral climate, while others have doubled down on fear and hatred and madness and darkness. I want to argue that the reactionary approach of Thunderfoot and others to feminism is fucking shit, but first I want to clear something up. I am not a social justice warrior. I am just an independent free-thinking skeptic who looks at the evidence and reaches my own conclusions. <laughs> I actually think there's a lot of really bad stuff going on in social justice circles lately, from substituting weird alienating jargon for plain English, to celebrating activists' ugliest impulses, to crusading against trivial or nonsensical offenses, to single-mindedly focusing on some pet social justice issue at the expense of all nuance. But the truth is that you can find people behaving terribly within any movement. On both sides of this debate and every other, there will be those who act and think in petty, selfish, and small-minded ways. That's human nature, not feminism. The intellectually responsible thing to do is try to filter all the nonsense out, and address only the strongest arguments that each side has to offer. The ideological transformation was drastic. We can see many things change about ContraPoints through each video. When each video, from start from the beginning, all the way to the more newer videos, you see a, a change from this atheistic concept to this worship of beauty and aesthetics. It is very fascinating. I will also say that I kind of like the, the first two videos. In fact, most of my opinions are exactly the same as this individual during her early days on the website. ContraPoints usually urges her viewers to not actually watch the older videos or the original videos. In my opinion, this is a way of trying to keep them from, from losing their interest in her videos and her content. And in a way, I think ContraPoint is actually smarter than her, than her collective, her community. She's uh, always a step higher, and everyone else is a digital pro, and she depends on their money. She, vol she causes voluntary exploitation with the mine, and it's a fascinating, pr fascinating process, a fascinating transformation or evolution over the years with this individual. The overarching plotline of my whole entire YouTube gender journey is that I used to be a tragic mess. And I'm still a tragic mess, but when I started this channel, I was a broke, gender dysphoric, alcoholic, cross-dressing tragic mess. I'd play a clip, but honestly, those videos are still too painful for me to even glance at. People, I'm not trans, and I don't know what it's like to be trans. No! Oh, oh, oh.
I think I spent too much time talking about ContraPoints. So I think I'm going to show you a clip of Lord Huguenot's opinion on BreadTube. And it's an opinion I, I agree with. They, they actually hate BreadTube. Oh, Pig Puncher, you missed a spot, and besides the point, we don't hate BreadTube, we hate how it became. Honestly, BreadTube has became nothing more than a circuit jerk community that defends rapists and chuds alike. They, they, listen guys, it's really important if you want to win a culture war, or you want to have your political movement succeed, leftism for example, to bring people in. You need people. You need young people, as a matter of fact. That's why the right is doing what they're doing. That's why the alt-right rabbit hole is so successful. They're bringing in young people. You're actually right. Young people are the future, obviously. And so if you can indoctrinate, like, teenagers now, you're, you're looking pretty good for the future. Uh, that's why people like um, Paul Joseph Watson can say... Gen Z is the most conservative generation since World War II. Like, like a jackass like he is. Um, and so there's a lot to be said about somebody on the left who can utilize an edgy sense of humor to bring young people to the left instead. Because one thing I have noticed about Gen Z is that we're seeing a lot less, like, centrism from Gen Z. And we're seeing a lot more extremes. Well, I like edgy jokes, but I don't think that's enough to actually draw in large amount of people to our movement. Honestly, I think the only type of people you attract to the movement are edgy upper middle class people that like to play video games all day long. I don't consider that something that is essential for us. The type of people we should be drawn in are the actual working class of our society. The miners, the doctors, the construction workers. These are the people we should attract. I will also say that cursing is not gonna really actually bring people to your movement. You must give them reasons why. You must actually propose policies or ideals that relate to their conditions or their life, their life in general, you know? It is that simple. You don't just say like a curse word and then suddenly you have a whole mass of people coming in. The type of people you want to bring into leftism aren't the people that would be the press. They wouldn't be the type of individuals that realize that their living conditions are bad. Instead, you have these pseudo leftists or these liberals who like cursing and like doing all these things and they think they understand the world and you think that their edginess is gonna solve all the world problems and they'll be doing this while ignoring all the important issues and they'll be part of your cult of personality most people in gen z seem to be more leaning towards either like extreme leftism or extreme like far alt-right kill brown people shit like that you know what i mean and so they have to be radicalized by somebody i think we, sh we can all agree it's probably best if they're radicalized by the left and not by the right this just seems like common sense to me okay i agree that there are certain parts of the left that are viable there are certain parts of the left that we should embrace however there's many aspects or certain variants of leftism that we should deny and forget about and the thing that you don't understand is that left isn't monolithic we are a diverse movement in fact i wouldn't say that we are really a movement because we're so divided there's different um ideological divergences and different versions of certain you know groups and I think that you don't really understand this. And I think there's a difference from a pacifist social democrat and a violent and barbaric Antifa member. And I will also say that 
from my point of view, it is best if leftists try to be professional. We should try to be as rational as possible. However, I don't think that you are professional. It seems like the ideological positions that you take only exist so that you can justify controversy. Pig Puncher, how much of an edgy gamer bro were you? I mean, oof. Oof. With the glass ceiling broken, all the oppressed groups shall prosper. Especially the most oppressed group of all, gamers. Uh, I love your PJW impression. Thank you, Comrade Courtney. Um, so, when I see the people that, okay, they're gonna get mad. They're gonna clip this. They're gonna clip it, guys. When I see woke scolds, okay? When I see these woke scolds on Twitter saying things like this, I feel like dudes like this just took their toxicity to a different side. They didn't change at all. They just came over to the left. Um, and I responded, yeah, that's the point. It's a good thing. They, uh, she responded, no, it isn't. The left doesn't need the toxicity or the slurs or all the people memeing close to the sun bullshit. Okay. So what the left needs is obviously more people. I've already said this before, political movements need people to survive, but you can't make it a bar, you can't bar the entry into your political movement to, to the point of like saying, no, you can't say this or you can't say that, all right? Or you can't act this certain way. You can't do that and expect your political movement to succeed. You just can't. If you're going to get extremely offended by certain mannerisms, or certain words being used, your political movement's just gonna fail. I agree with you, but I do not think that you're gonna implement it correctly. It's not gonna work. Young people aren't going to stop saying slurs and just hop right on board with your political movement if you're gonna set a bar for entry like that. You have to be able to show young, edgy people, mostly straight, white, angry male gamer bros, which I know you hate them and you think they're subhuman. I, I know, I've seen how these woke scolders talk, okay? With the glass ceiling broken, all the oppressed groups shall prosper, especially the most oppressed group of all, gamers. They say, why should we want them on the left? The reason you need them on the left is because... Well, at least in America, they're the majority of the population, um, or at least a significant chunk of it, and... Honestly, I don't see why you think you gamers are so oppressed. It's like only like a certain amount of the population really spend so many times on video games like this. The most important people you should be appealing to as is like, you know, miners, construction workers, those other people that actually do work. Those actual people that are the working class. And yes, those people are mostly white. That is definitely the truth. However, I don't think you really have a concern for the working class. It seems like all your concerns are bougie. Like, I feel like our society that we live in shouldn't really see something like these edgy little kids as something of importance. What really matters is those that are hungry, those that spend so many hours at work, and those that are simply discriminated against for their class. And I find this very important to focus on. And when you look at the world, you see like all these things you talk about, all these, these anti-SJW gamers that hate the restrictions on language. I feel like this is a first world problem. This is like privileged stuff, you know? It doesn't make sense for the majority of the people that will ever exist. There's, there's, a, 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 there's a process here. If you can bring an edgy gamer bro who likes to say gamer words all the time to the far left, Eventually, when they spend time in these leftist spaces, they're probably going to end up being more like you. They're probably going to stop saying those slurs and whatnot. They're probably going to stop being so edgy. But 
figures, like Vosh, for example, who is the person they like to attack the most, are really good for the left. Regardless of how much you may personally dislike him, they're very good for the left in terms of optics and in terms of bringing people in. Even Destiny, even fucking Destiny, who isn't even a lefty. Destiny isn't a leftist. He doesn't spread leftist rhetoric, but his edgy uh, sense of humor, his confrontational, um, boisterous personality, that was able to bring in so many people. Look at Faraday Speaks, whose video went fucking viral at the beginning of this year, like fucking around April or whatever. Um, his video on his journey out of the alt-right pipeline went fucking viral. I think it has like 480,000, like half a million views right now. He blew up from that. And when you look at the comments of that video, it's all, holy shit, I experienced the same thing. I was in the same place. I was just like you. That's the kind, those are the comments that I see on Faraday Speaks video, Faraday Speaks' video about that. So it's very clear that this edginess is important. The glass ceiling broken, all the oppressed groups shall prosper. Especially the most oppressed group of all, gamers. Biggie B, Drey, you don't even know who I'm not born. Anybody else? Corrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrr
Christy Winters is not a leftist. No, she's not a leftist. That's also what upsets me a lot. A lot of these, like, super woke scoldy people oftentimes don't even, even end up being leftists. Like, look at fucking Christy Winters. Her, she's got me blocked, I believe, but her Twitter bio says Bernie bros get out. She's like a Biden supporter or something. Like, imagine being, so, like, calling yourself a progressive and saying you care about, like, the rights of, of uh, poor people and of women and things like that, but then you're not willing to address the problems with the economic system, with the entire system that perpetuates the forms of, um, of, uh, uh, of oppression and the, uh, that, that actually cause these things, right? Oh, she's a Kamala per uh, supporter. Of course she fucking is. Like, imagine thinking that you can act, like, imagine claiming to be, like, a hardcore progressive and not actually going at the root of the problem. That's what Christy Winters is. I agree. Now, there's a huge difference uh, when it comes to, like, edginess. Like, there, there's a difference between just saying, like, the N-word all the time or something and, um, and like, I don't know, just being sort of confrontational, being a big fan of blood sports and whatnot, uh, you know, yelling at people and, and things like that. There's, there's a difference here, obviously. When I say edgy, I'm not saying, oh, saying the N-word every five minutes. Like, no, that's not what I'm talking about. If you think that's what I'm talking about, then you're probably a bad faith actor. But when I talk about edginess, I'm talking about yelling, being angry, having some like dirty humor, a lot like ContraPoint's kind of dirty. Honestly, you made a contradiction. You said we must not yell, but you said we must yell. These edgy jokes you talk about are typical of those I don't really try to be unique. They're a constant ad nauseum of regurgitated jokes. They're a constant repeat of the same thing. I see no uniqueness in these jokes at all. And ContraPoint's jokes that she makes are not really funny in my opinion. They are too soft to me. Like, they don't really offer that much. Humor, like, uh, um, ContraPoints, like, makes, makes a lot of sex jokes and stuff. Making sex jokes, things like that. Um, also, when I say slurs, I'm talking about things like the N-word, not like cunt. Um, I've literally ran to people on Twitter today who unironically were saying cunt is a misogynistic slur. If you think cunt is a misogynistic slur, like, I would make the normie argument saying that dick would be a, a fucking misandrist slur but that's fucking stupid um if you unironically think cunt is misogynistic then i would probably advise that you um you get a vasectomy all right that's all i have for today it's just it gets i get so fucking angry when i see the left tearing itself apart because it's it's just so upsetting, especially when the people who are doing it are, like, part of the groups that I'm trying to advocate for. So, like, when I see, like, a trans person um, who's, like, a woke scold, like, a non... Okay, when I see, like, a non-binary trans person who's also a woke scold, that pisses me off because what I do is for them, for people like them. You know, going after someone like Calvin Gara, who's a fucking true scum, who's like extremely toxic to the trans community, who says non-binary people are invalid or trans people are invalid. They aren't actually trans unless they have uh, dysphoria. Like, when that's what I do all day, like, I, I don't understand how you can possibly think that it's a good idea to attack these large public figures that are not only advocating for your existence, but are bringing more people in to do the same. But listen, everybody, if you're trans in chat right now, especially, especially if you are non-binary in chat right now, I fucking love you. And, I'm, and I will never stop advocating for you all, okay? All my trans people, all my black people, all my women, all my, uh, all my people who are part of a group, all my LGBT cutie pies, okay? Listen, I'm advocating for you all. I love you all. You guys are the best, and I'm never going to stop. All I want... If, 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 like, Jack Saint or something sees this video and he decides to cut some of it out of context or just 
watch it in its entirety. Listen, my main goal is and will always be to spread leftism, to bring as many people as possible to the left, okay? And I will do that by whatever ne means necessary. And I would really appreciate it if lefties could stop attacking each other and tearing the left apart. Instead, we should be unified. We should be together. We need to focus on the true enemy, the alt-right, the reactionaries, things like that. Because this can't sustain itself, you know? I'm pretty thick-skinned, okay? But it's pretty fucking tough. I'm not gonna lie. It's pretty tough doing what I do and not only being on, like, literal Nazi white supremacist terror groups kill lists while also having lefties that are that should be comrades who should be, like, you know, supportive coming after me on Twitter and shit like that. Which, yeah, I know, it's Twitter. It's not really... It doesn't hurt me that much, but it's like, I don't know, it is shitty, right? Like, it is shitty. We need to get together because there are literal Nazi white supremacist fucking terrorist groups out there that have, like, many, like, me, Vosh, many other figures on BreadTube. Like, they have our names on kill lists. Like, I won't be surprised if some, like, BreadTuber does a meetup or something and a Nazi or an alt-writer comes with a fucking AK and shoots up the place that they're holding the meetup at or something. Like, I wouldn't be surprised if something like this happens within, like, the next year. As a matter of fact, I'm calling it right now. It will happen in the next year. A bread tuber will be, will be like, attacked or killed by, a, like, a, a neo-Nazi terrorist. Like, within the next year, as bread tube grows and gets more popular and the Nazis start to get more desperate. So the fact that this is, like, an ever-looming threat, like, and not even that crazy of one either, the fact that this is always an ever-looming threat means that, like, lefties, people on the left, need to, need to stick together. The people that we're up against want to kill us all. Not just the trans people, not just the LGBT people, not just the, the, the minorities, but they want to kill even the straight white cishet males who are supporting them. They'll do it last probably, but they want to kill us too. So we need to stick together like glue, okay? And like, like smeared gamer Cheeto hands, we need to stick together, okay? And... We gotta work together against the fucking Nazis, okay? We got a much bigger, much bigger threat. This video is simply a combination of the skeptic community and exaggerations of online leftist community importance to the real world. It's this nonsense, that's all it is.
Give up till we die. Cause we won't give up till we die. 